law has got no comparison law is incomparable it exists irrespective of we learn about life through questions how do we manage that in a relationship can it also affect the circumstances are they able to really understand any why all these three things are linked together so what do we do of social media to answer some of these mr praveen mankar founder of pratibhim charitable trust brings to you face to face this week we are talking about laws of the universe when we aspire for something very strongly the entire universe conspires to give it to us we all are very familiar with this message which implies that the universe has its own ways of balance and check so my question to you would be what are the different laws of the universe Oh my god that's you huge it's a huge subject several laws but i liked what you said balance and checks yeah the entire universe operates only under some specific laws when you say law first you you're a lawyer right so you must first understand what is a law and forget the classical definitions of textbook of law to understand law you must simply understand that it is an existence of a condition irrespective of circumstances therefore it is a law law is something which cannot be scuttled it cannot be manipulated it cannot be modified it cannot be uh, having exceptions and that's why you call it a law in the presence of law certain actions are repeatedly performed in exactly the same way again and again n number of times irrespective of the era like the earth rotates on its axis every 24 hours has been happening for millions of years it's the law of rotation it's the law of your day and night wherever you are on the planet your day and night follows the same pattern if you are on the equator it will follow a 12 hour pattern 12 hours of night 12 hours of day the universe is very orderly in place so the first law in the universe that you would want to learn is the law of order the second law that the universe teaches us is the law of progress because the universe is an ever expanding entity right at the beginning there was something called the black hole nothingness but from that nothingness everything emerged that means that nothingness had something in it which had the capability of creating anything and everything and that something which was not defined earlier is now probably defined as a cosmic microwave background when i say cosmic microwave background it means there is an energy field that is operating in the entire universe and when the energy changes its frequency and amplitude it reveals itself in different different forms so the energy started revealing itself in solar systems so you have a sun in the center and planets around it the energy started revealing itself in different different shapes colors sizes forms and since we belong to the planet earth we see a plethora of these things we see a variety of shapes we see a variety of colors so this is alteration of energy which comes into tangible substance so there is a conversion of energy to matter go right at the beginning from this cosmic microwave background you had the formation of atoms again microscopic substance atoms cannot be seen by the naked eye the atoms combined to form the elements so you have the elements of the periodic table the hydrogen helium nitrogen carbon so on and so forth from the elements formed molecules so the hydrogen at, uh, element combined with the oxygen element and formed a molecule of water h2o you mixed different substances different molecules and you had substances for example you mixed the water molecule with a sodium chloride molecule and you had saline so all this is progress from nothingness 
to something, something simple and from something simple to the more complicated. And this thing is happening on an ongoing basis continuously with or without human knowledge. Okay? You may not know right now what planet is getting formed in the universe in which galaxy. You may not know that, but it is happening. And that is why we discover that the universe is an ever expanding entity. So, the second law is a law of progress. The third law is a law of cause and effect. For everything there is a cause and whatever be the cause, it will show an effect corresponding to the cause. And therefore, Newton has that law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The third corollary to this law is the law of give and take. So, unless you give, you cannot take, unless I empty out this receptor, I cannot fill it. If it is already full, I cannot fill it further. I have to first empty it out. So, it has to give out its contents for it to become capable of receiving new content. Same with us human beings. Unless we give out, we do not become capable of receiving. So, giving and taking is also a law as a corollary to cause and effect because it is equal and opposite. The other law is a law of appearance. I appear so, but I am not so. So, there the truth is hidden behind the appearance. For example, I want to appear to be a goody goody somebody in the society, but I am a nasty, lousy nobody within. People do not know because I appear to be so. My truth is different. Hmm? So, there is a law of appearance. Never get deceived by appearances. Classic example is of the sunset or the sunrise. They appear, the sun appears to rise or the sun appears to set. The truth is that the sun with respect to earth is static. It is the earth's rotation on its axis that gives you the appearance of a sunrise or a sunset. Similarly, we appear as human beings. The truth is that we all are life forms. We are not life, we are life forms. There is life throbbing inside us. In every cell in our body, there is life pulsating. And that is the truth which is not evident because it does not appear. So, appearance is a smoke screen, the truth is behind the appearance. That is another law. Yet another law of the universe is the law of attraction or law of magnetism. We attract in our lives those things which we deserve. We deserve. Now, this is a word which has to be understood carefully. I prepare myself through my lifestyle to become capable of receiving whatever comes to me in my life. Again, I am cautioning you. Please listen carefully. I am not talking about good and bad. I am talking about what you deserve. Whatever I get in my life is what I deserve. If today I have arthritis, I deserved it. If today I have poverty, I deserved it. Why did I deserve it? Because I cultivated myself knowingly or unknowingly to become a subject that attracts these things in my life. I have attracted poverty, I have attracted broken relationships, I have attracted arthritis, I have attracted wealth, I have attracted peace, I have attracted harmony. So, good and bad is not the subject. The subject is attraction. What have I attracted in my life? So, that is yet another law. One more important law is the law of joy, gratitude and reverence. Because in today's society, we have foregone gratitude. We are not grateful for whatever we have received in life. There is no joy in our life. Very simple example. Whenever you receive something, at least appearance wise, your face lights up, you smile. And for even for appearance sake, you say thank you. Whether you genuinely are happy or whether you are genuinely meaning that thank you is a separate subject. But let us say we believe your appearance to be true. You have said thank you and you have expressed your gratitude. Why? Because you have the joy of receiving something. You got a birthday present. Thank you. You smiled and you said thank you. So, joy and gratitude go together. Wife, husband, wedding anniversary. Husband forgets the wedding anniversary, does not bring any present for the wife does not even wish her. Will the wife smile and say thank you? 
for forgetting my our anniversary definitely not she will definitely be annoyed so where there is no gratitude there is annoyance there is anger there is disappointment there is frustration joy and gratitude are the wings of the same bird and they have to they have to flap in unison for the bird to take off when the bird takes off it takes off towards reverence wherever there is joy and gratitude in a family you will find people respecting each other today family members don't respect each other because there is absence of joy the children are not happy in the presence of their parents the spouse is not happy in the presence of the spouse so no joy and why there is no joy because they are not grateful for what the parents have done for the children the spouse is not happy for what the spouse has done for him or her and therefore there is neither joy nor gratitude and because both these things are absent both wings are not flapping there is absence of reverence so you will find such families not having any respect for each other so this is one of the most important laws which people should understand that unless i practice joy i will not be grateful and vice versa unless i practice gratitude i will not experience joy and unless i have joy and gratitude i will not have a respectful society so this is yet another law joy gratitude reverence then there is another important law which is also three pronged think feel and act many of us are good thinkers we think a lot but we don't feel anything i think that i should be in business i think a lot but i don't feel intensely that i should take the risk of starting a business i will never start a business and unless i feel something my action will not happen so the feel and act go together think and act do not necessarily go together and i'll give some small examples on this i know every year that i have to file tax returns thinking when do i start filing returns last minute last week my chartered accountant has to remind me hey you have not given information please i have to file returns when the feeling of danger starts creeping up then i take action so here i have given you a feeling of danger so let me give you a feeling of joy or love when do i start thinking of a possible partner suppose i am single i am not married i am i'm thinking of getting married to somebody when do i start thinking about that person when i start feeling for that person otherwise that thought process is fleeting i think about somebody and okay hey koi end of the story but when i start feeling for that somebody then i think of that somebody for a long time 16 hours a day 18 hours a day i am starry eyed thinking about that person when will i propose when i feel i propose i don't think and propose i feel and propose the people who think and propose are commercial people isme mera fayda kya hmm? those are the people who will propose on the basis of thinking and not on the basis of feeling so think feel and act is a powerful law unless you feel you will not do wherever your feelings are your actions are in tune with your feelings so this is a law think feel act so these are some of the laws of the universe which we do not understand as human beings which we do not think are an integral part of our life and therefore we treat them as subjects and not as something which i should be doing on a day to day basis or practicing in my living big subject since you asked a generalized question laws of the universe i just gave you a few examples that just made me realize that we just take these to be just part of our daily life never really realizing they are the laws of the universe and yes. they have an impact on our lives 100% when you don't understand a law or you don't understand a subject as a law out of ignorance you break them and once you break the law you cannot you being a lawyer you can't go to the judge and say i didn't know the law there is no pardon for not knowing the law so if a human judge can say this sentence that there is no pardon for being ignorant of the law imagine the universal judge he never pardons you whether you break the law knowingly or unknowingly you will be given a sentence a punishment and the punishment comes to you in the form of disease or it comes to you in the form of mental trauma whenever you have a physical ailment or you are mentally troubled be sure that you are being punished by the universal judge so in this manner we don't need to make a conscious effort to follow the laws you of uh, the universe or nature takes its own course 
otherwise nature takes its own course i mean if you don't want to follow the law be prepared to be punished in the human case the lawyer may miss you the police may miss you the judge may miss you and you will escape in the universal judgment you will never escape because the records are perfect when will you suffer when you will be punished how much will be the punishment is all commensurate perfectly just so people who think i can escape you may escape human justice you can't escape universal justice so nature takes its own course yes so in this would we say that even um, freedom and happiness is one of the uh, laws of the universe and how would we define that if it freedom is? is your birthright whatever stage you are at you are born free there is no bondage the only bondage is of the substance your soul is bonded by the substance in which it is enshrined so we could say that is life a total sum of your action and reaction to it within the laws of the universe yes every action is equal and opposite so that's how it sums up the whole thing that the law of universe that we just thought it's just a term that is used which never really understood ha ah, the whole problem is we use lot of terms without understanding without understanding law has got no comparison law is incomparable it exists irrespective of if you understand this it exists irrespective of then you have understood law so that would make it a whole life life is a law so it would be right to say that the universe exists in perfect harmony and order by virtue of these laws once we understand apply and align ourselves with these universal laws we will experience transformation in every area of our life beyond what we have ever dared to imagine if you have some questions about life please connect with us do not forget to like share subscribe and press the bell icon for weekly updates